So I'm hoping that uh, you'll follow through with it. Number one, and again, this is not a personal attack. This is a position uh, inquiry. But I know that when Mr. Baldwin was hired, I'm sure he came with proper credentials, the professional credentials, the educational credentials, and the background that he needed to be able to, uh, to run the job as administrator of the city of Easley. My question is, with those credentials, and since he was hired with that uh, good vetting system, I'm sure it was in place, why do we need an assistant administrator? Again, Tom, it's not personal. I'm just asking from my perspective. DC has never had an assistant administrator, so why now? Uh, that's one of the things. The second thing with the grass clippings, um, Ms. Webb, you said that uh, you thought you'd come up with a good solution. I disagree uh, for this reason. One is that we had grass clippings were being picked up years ago. That was stopped. Now it's going to be taken back up again, but with a charge to the citizens that want to have the grass clippings picked up. It's a new point for me. I, I have a dog in the fire. But uh, I do pay taxes. I know the taxes were paying for that. Now you're going to add another tax on that for the grass, grass clippings. To me, the grass clippings <coughs> issue is either a management or a maintenance issue. And I would like for a little explanation as to why we have to go to trash cans and charge the citizens even more to have the grass clippings picked up. <coughs> Third thing, the ARPA funds that you are talking about tonight, I think one of the projects on there or the low uh, income or the low <coughs> interest loans that were made available many years ago. I doubt if anybody on the council was even around when that was done. My understanding is going to use some of these funds to pay off those mortgages. Um, I'm sympathetic to the people, but that's not the right thing to do. I know some of the people have paid, so what are you going to do for them? What are we going to do for the ones that haven't paid? Are you going to pay it off and, and just encourage it? Uh, to me, since the city still owns the property, you hold a mortgage, you should go through just like anyone else and foreclose on a mortgage and then put those properties that would become city property up for public sale. Okay? Thank you. Bob Easter. And it's Easter, unfortunately. Easter. <laughs> just like the holiday we're fixing to have. Uh, three items. Mr. Mayor, when they first started the development of an Irish Drive, you and I had some discussions about the trucks. I spoke with former council member Dykes. He was at my house. But the speeds they ran up and down the roads, the destruction, the yards they were doing, and we kept getting told we're going to get help. I was recently made aware of an email that was sent, and the reply back, well, two, it was, had two items. One, litter coming off, and two, the damage to the roads. And your reply was, you pick the litter up in your yard, they can pick it up in theirs, it shouldn't be a big problem, and you didn't see the damage. I'm the one that sent you the email and showed you the corner, it was all cut up, and I got an email back that says, oh, 
That's a right of way that easily can be fixed after this is done. This is a three to four year project. So these people have to live with this that long. With these trucks cutting through their corners of the yards and because they're just so big, they can't make turns. In the same token, in the city ordinances, we step on them, step back. I attended a planning commission meeting where they were discussing one road versus two outlets, and it, the ordinance said we had to have two, but for some time we've been doing one. And I'm not pointing the finger directly, but you said in that meeting, I'll take responsibility for that. It was brought back to the city council that yes, we should be doing two, not one, but we can't be doing it. The other one I just discovered was 1.5 point zero eight pre-existing front setbacks and in that ordinance it gives a minimum setback to houses and it also states that if the existing houses do not meet that minimum standard then any new houses must meet the existing that's there well if you're going to, have to look at those houses the average setback on Irish Drive is 40 to 50 feet those houses are 10 feet off the road, so they don't meet that either. So that's the second one that we're not following. And I just can't believe we just continue to, to not follow ordinances when they're the ordinances that you people set up as your laws and your bylaws of how you operate. Third, I agree with the gentleman on the grass clippings. This got stopped back in June. Got stopped in June. It's 10 months later, we're doing the first reading tonight, which means it'll be August. We keep losing services, but we keep still paying the same amount of taxes. So something needs to be done. Thank you. my March easily combined utilities bill. There was a message informing me that my sewer rates would be increased on the average monthly bill by 5.7% effective April the 1st. Let's add that to last week's report that food prices jumped 13% in one month. And let's not forget the pain at the pump when we go to get gas. Inflation remains an unwelcome presence in 2022, driving prices through the roof from grocery stores to the gas pump. <coughs> This increase in sewer rates would not have an increase and in that could be avoided. Last year, when all the developments were being approved and the citizens questioned the infrastructure, such as schools and utilities, could they handle this rapid growth? We were all assured there were no issues. On January the 20th, 2022, at the ARPA committee meeting, Mr. Ledbetter from Easily Combined Utilities requested $2.5 million as a long-term investment in the Middle Branch Wastewater Treatment Plant. ECU had seen a tremendous growth in the city of Easley, and per DHEC, they are closely to capacity. Per Mr. Ledbetter's letter, by investing in this upgrade, the Easley City Council can directly return to the citizens of Easley the money that was ultimately provided by the people. Instead, we got an increase in the sewer rates. The funds Mr. Ledbetter requested was an export uh, expenditure that complies under the ARPA guidelines. But the city didn't allocate any of the ARPA funding to the easily combined utilities, and now we have to pay more for sewer. I can agree with the expenditures on the Haygood Park stormwater issue and the Alice Park transformer repair, but for the other four items, they're off base. The taxpayers' ARPA money could have been better spent on infrastructure such as roads, stormwater, sewer, and broadband. Expenditures that would benefit everyone, not just a few. The city council and the mayor needs to be more financially responsible to the citizens of Easley. Melissa Bowman. Last week there was a video posted on social media that showed the city of Easley's vacuum truck collecting what was clearly a pile of grass clippings along the side of a curb in the Providence neighborhood. 
has caught my attention because we all know that the city discontinued grass clippings back up several months ago due to the fact that, quote, grass clippings caused extensive damage to the equipment. When we asked, when asked, the explanation given by the city was that this was a pile of mixed leaves and grass clippings and the driver had been instructed not to pick up this type of pile going forward. This seems like a reasonable explanation, except this isn't a new policy that just started. It's been a policy for several months. Given that the videographer that recorded the collection told me that they clearly did not see any leaves in the pile, it was only grass, they could only lead me to and other, me and other citizens in the city to come up with one logical explanation. This collection was done at the request of someone at City Hall as a favor or maybe it's just special treatment based on your address. Tonight you all vote on a, what some think is a uh, resolution to the cl clippings fiasco. Before you vote on that ordinance, I want to bring to your attention that this resolution was developed with little or no input from the citizens. Surplus level, this seems like a great compromise. However, I must ask, why do the citizens have to pay $30 annually for a, tra for a service that was originally included in our taxes? We already lost curbside recycling, another service that was included in our taxes. Our services have decreased and now our bed taxes are basically increasing due to this fee. Also, have you ever seen what week old grass looks like in the trash can? It's not pretty, it smells, and it's messy. So why is the city passing the buck to the citizens? Recently, I reviewed the accounts payable general ledger for some miscellaneous charges for the city. The waste of spending on the food alone was alarming. Between July 21 and the 1st of March, a total of $3,785 was spent by the city officials at restaurants such as The Huddle, Inkies, Chick-fil-A, Arnold's, Capri's, McDonald's, El Burrito, Loco, and Nuts. Although I'm glad the city is supporting local businesses, the amounts of transactions between $10 and $100 each can only lead one to believe that city officials are enjoying lunches and dinners on the citizens' dime. However, is the out-of-town and high-end 